Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm here to give you guys a recap on the new episode of the Natsu no Taize Imashimi no Fukatsu, or you can call it the Seven Deadly Sins Revival of the Commandments, which is on episode 5. Now, they again, A1 doing a good job with the adaptation. I'll let you guys know right now that they adapted chapters 120 to 122, and one scene from chapter 139, surprisingly. Yes, you heard me. They adapted one scene from chapter 139. It doesn't... It's not too much and it's not that bad, honestly. I mean, like, um... It's not It's not a big deal to, like... It's not a big deal out of it. I think the try... I think A1 is doing the best they can to make things flow all together to a certain, like, um... Point for, um... Mo most of our characters for the Seven Deadly Sins. And I think they're doing a good job. And as I said, they adapted chapters 120 to 122. Repeating myself again, I apologize. And one scene from 139. Chapter 139. So if anything else, let's go. We have to it that after the opening and certain recap, and there's one scene about, like, um, from 120 where Merlin asks Hawk, can you um, read his magic power? And apparently Hawk says it's zero, and Merlin realizes that it's the effect of the Seal of the Goddess Clan. And Deanne realizes that this is like um, maybe the perfect time to like um, beat him. And I'm thinking in my mind, this guy's at 26,000 right now. I don't know if you ha ever gonna have a chance to beat him. And we have to it that after the opening, it plays a scene from one, chapter 139, or or it does an adaptation of 139 of the no Taizai, where Bond is healing King and everything seems to be well, and Bond goes separate ways, but not before he threatens Harade like. You better keep Elaine's body or I will f kill you next time we meet. And therefore, um, King and Bond say their goodbyes while Jericho goes with Bond, etc. And we have to it that it goes back to the scene with chapter 120, where Garland is actually surprised to see hu human settlements being being filled with um, with buildings and everyone's right there. We have to it that... Um, that... Garland says, okay, I need some space. And he ends up swinging or giving a couple swipes with his one with his one weapon. And he pushes, push, he freaking pushes um the freaking like, um or he devastated the town pretty badly. Or pushed aside a lot of buildings with just, with just his power. And, and Garland therefore tells Meliodas, I've always wanted to like pick a fight with you. You know that? And Meliodas charges in to try to like him hit Galen as best he can, but that didn't work, and he ends up and Galen ends up stabbing him effortlessly. But that was just a clone. A couple more clones try to hit Galen, but it doesn't seem to be effective. And Galen knows where Meliodas is coming from and grabs him by the throat and takes care of a clone effortlessly. And he even asks Meliodas one question: Are you really Meliodas? And because the reason why he's asking this is because, like, um, I'm pretty sure he must be thinking that Melly Otis, you have to be stronger than this. Are you really sure you're him? And we have to it that Deanne comes in to try to try to help out the try to help try to help out, and we have to it that Merlin uses perfect cube on the on King Art on King Arthur or Arthur Elizabeth and many others to like um protect them. And we have to it that um that Deanne. Goes back into transformation and wall off the clothes and tries to hit Galen with her hammer, but freaking Galen just like um effortlessly just deflects it back and it hits Dion back in the forehead and she gets no she gets knocked out. We have to it that like um Merlin tries to use a spell on him but ends up ends up having to like um run off. And Meliodas asks Dion if she is okay. And we have to it that like um that slander says that it's Lady Merlin's um, magic power. And we have to it that uh, Merlin says, I did not do anything to make him disappear. He escaped my spell effect radius from several miles instantaneously just by jumping. And we have to it that Galen just appears right behind freaking Merlin right away right now. And ju just when things are about to get really ugly for the time, just things was about to get really, really ugly... We have to it that Slander tries to protect Merlin, but only gets punched aside to like um punched aside effortlessly, and his arm kind of came off, I think. And we have to it that Merlin tries to strike a deal, with, tries to strike a deal with him, like trying to buy some time and possibly try to like um 
Merlin decides to strike a deal with him, knowing that we have no chance against him, and I have to protect the people of Camelot, Arthur, and everyone else altogether, as Merlin says. And she tries to say, how about it? Like, um, you, if you consider sparing, sparing us, like, um, I'll give you something in return, something that, the uh, something that could give you great aid to the Ten Commandments. And we had to it that Merlin's like, what the hell's going on? And we have to it that Meliodas says, No, Merlin, that's not going to work on him. And even Gollum's like, You told a lie, haven't you? And all of a sudden, Merlin just literally turned to stone. And they go like, What the hell just happened right now? What the hell just happened? Even everyone's like in shock and awe right now. And we have to it that Gollum therefore screams out, I am Gollum of truth. Gollum, the truth of the Ten Commandments. Any who lie before me will have will be turned to stern stone, no matter who my, who you be. And even so, Merlin says, Not even, the, this commandment is given to me by the king of the demons and is absolute. Nothing can save you. And he was about to shatter Merlin to a million pieces or something. And we had to it that Meliodas comes in to stop to stop him and we have to it that Hawks like, wow, Meliodas' Meliodas' power level just increased to four thousand four hundred. And everyone else tries to like him go on up 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 against Gollum, but Gollum effortlessly just kills him off with just a sl with many slashes of his weapon. We have to it that Meliodas gets his arm slashed off and he has no other option anymore. He ends up going into that form that he was like in the first season of the National Taizai. Even Hawk says, like, um, it's like the same thing we saw at the fight festival, etc. And we have to it that, that Meliodas is able to actually push him back while Hawk, Hawk therefore talks about, like, um, talks about, um, talks about, um, Meliodas' power level, etc., you know? And he says that's like 10,300. And we have to it that, um, that Meliodas tries to use that powerful magic spell, a powerful magic on Gollum, but it did not work on Gollum at all. And he ends up, ends up stabbing Meliodas with his weapon and therefore says, I never thought you became so weak. You know what? Curse your freaking weakness in the afterlife and ends up stabbing Meliodas and, and, Slices Deanne along with like killing Slander, cutting Merlin's stone head off, and crushing it with his foot. We had to that Gon tries to kill, um, tries to, um, kill Elizabeth and Arthur and Hawk that's in the perfect cube, but ends up letting them go because the perfect cube is something he can't destroy. And he ends up jumping away. And we had to it that it, the, the fight, the fight scene ends off with freaking like Gon with, um, Gollum jumping off into the distance, and we have to it that Gother, who's back in his original form, ends up laughing, etc. Um, yeah. That is pretty much chapters 120 and 121. Although, I will tell you guys right now that there was one scene from chapter 122 that came in before the finishing fight with Gollum and so forth, when he when he achieved victory, etc. Was this scene right here with, like, um, the Ten Commandments asking about, like, um, about the magic power. Of course, like, um, we have to it that Zeldris explains that, like, um, well, the powers that's been overflowing in Britannia have dried up, so no wonder it's taking longer to recover our power. We have to it that, like, um, there's some humans on the other hand tells the Jikai to go away or something, and we have to it that Fraudrin gives a history lesson to, like, um, to his friends that it's okay. Not everything is lost, even though, like, um, the magic powers dried up. He explains to his friends that, like, um, the powers that course through this land, um, flow through the animals and plants dwelling in it, and continuously it's been carried and multiplied and spread throughout the land here for 3,000 years. And we had to it that Derrie ends up going into, like, going to a human who's pretty much talking to them or something, and ends up taking something that's coming out of his mouth, surprisingly, and she ends up eating it. And... We have to it that Maraskula asks Deria, like, um, how's it taste? And she says, and she ends up saying, um, my butt, but in a different cursing slang format or something. And says, two birds with one stone. And we have to it that, um, Mons Piet or something, therefore it says, 
There are some impurities in the taste, but the soul contains a small amount of power that surprisingly have a rich taste to it. If we make use, make this our main diet, we'll be able to exterminate the swarming humans while we replenish our power at the same time. Two burns, one stone. Is that right? And Daria says, yep. And we have to with that. Um, Mel Schooler um, likes that kind of idea while Montpiet, like, um, what you mean, uh, Montpiet ends up eating a soul of someone else's and ends up, we have to it that Mel Schooler decides to use some kind of spell surprisingly and ask Frogin if there's any human sentiments nearby. And I let you guys know that this scene played before Galen's finishing fight with Meliodas and the others. So pretty much they adapted one scene from chapter 122 and put it put it um, before um, Galen's um, finishing fight in this episode, not after. I'll let you guys know that right now. That was just a minor sl slight change, but it's no big deal. And we have to it that it goes into... We have to it that um, in the anime after the fight with Galen and so forth, we, ha we see that the trio... Are just walking um, by, talking to each other, having some funny comedic moments, and we have to that Gil Thunder and the others ends up finding like um, a couple people on the road, and they end up having they look like they're empty shells, just like how like there was one scene like um, like I said where Deria and Montspiet ends up eating a soul from two humans, they end up being like dead, like they're not dead, they're living, but it's like they're empty, pretty much empty. Which just signifies one thing. They end up hearing some screams at the village and they end up going there right away. And we have to it that a red demon is actually taking the, is taking something from taking something from the humans and they all end up having to not move and end up being those empty shells just like um that scene with Deria and Montpiet taking something out of them. Which I will not spoil yet and I will show and I will talk about it later. I mean like um those of you guys who are manga readers and so etc would know what I'm talking about. Those of you guys who are anime onlys, just wait for the time being. I'm not gonna try to like um say anything off the bat right away and spoil something a bit, but it is very important. And we have to it that um Guilt Thunder comes in to take care of the red demon along with Hauser and freaking like um Guillermoir managed to take down a red demon, but and we have to it that those things that the red demon stole ends up going back to the original bodies and they end up being functional again. So this is pretty much very important and you guys will get and those of you guys who are anime only, you will get the idea later once it keeps um once it shows up eventually. And we have to it that Gil Thunder, Hauser, and Guillermoir ends up meeting a grey a grey demon surprisingly, which is like similar to like, um, to that, to Hendrickson. And we have to it that a person shows up and says that is an ash demon or a freaking like, um, gray demon or something, etc. And we have to it that this person actually is like, um, Hendrickson, who is apparently alive, obviously. And we have to it that he therefore tells Greermore, Hauser, and Gil Thunder that we have to work together to like um take to take down this beast. Although like um it looks pretty it looks like it looks like to me um Gil Thunder Housing Greenmore might might not agree with that because of seeing what he's done. And the preview of the next episode is gonna show and talk a lot of what's gonna ha of what just happened, etc. And judging by like uh, throughout these past um five episodes or something, um, they have been adapting three chapters per episode, which I believe they're doing a really nice job, in fact, which I congratulate A1 Pictures for doing a nice job, thank you so much, but, um, I got a bad feeling it's gonna end up in a terrible cliffhanger of this season of the Nats No Ties Eye, in my eyes and opinion, because, honestly, like, um, the way how it, how, how it's going right now, I got a bad feeling that, it will end up in a terrible cliffhanger of this season of the Natsu no Taizai. I'm pretty sure those of you guys who are manga readers will know what I'm talking about. Okay, enough of me being off topic and about the adaptation of the Natsu no Taizai. Like I said and repeating myself the third time, they adapted chapters 
120 to 122 along with one scene from chapter 139 I believe and they kind of switched some scenes around to make things kind of flow a bit like um they they that scene with Derriere and the Ten Commandments is like put before Galen's um finishing fight not after but you know I think it still flows well and like I said they made they adapted one scene from chapter 139 which is from like um with um Bond King Harade and Bond taking separate ways with King to make to maybe make it flow but to make it flow but I think they still did a good job so look just by looking at just by looking at it I think they're doing a nice job I'm really happy to see where they're going what where, where a1's doing where where a1 is doing the adaptation and the preview of the next episode is going to be very very important because this is where a lot of things are going to be revealed all you anime onlys who don't know what's going on be prepared for the information to come that's all i can really tell you minus spoilers by the way so until then i'll see you guys in my next video so i'm alpha zero people have a good day and i'll see you guys next time all right peace out bye bye